So this brings us to a new kind of detector which I'll describe to you known as position sensitive detectors or PSTs. What do you mean by position sensitive? Uh, you can see here I have shown you that this is an incident beam and these are the scattered beams. Now this position sensitive detector not only detects the neutron, it can tell us at which position is detected. So that means I can get the information about the momentum transfer from the positioned information on this detector. What I mean to say So I have a detector here and there is a central wire. If I can find out where the neutron has entered with some uncertainty, certainly we cannot find out exactly but with some resolution if I can find this out then I know this is the direct beam. If I know this distance, if I know this distance then from this I can calculate out the angle and from there the Q value which is 4 pi by lambda sin theta where lambda is the incident neutron energy. Because if you remember what was my target was to find out intensity as a function of Q in our experiments and this is the experiment where we can find out structure and I know that IQ is related to the G of R the pair correlation function which is structure at in very different way you can say structure G of R the average picture so I can calculate if I can calculate theta because I know at what position the neutron has struck so from the theta I can find out Q so I can get information on a very large range of Q. When I come to actual experiments I will show you how we get. So basically a large range of Q can be covered in a PhD so it will save us time. So let me just show you once again I showed it to earlier. <coughs> so the neutron scattered I am showing on a circle but this circle basically part of a sphere actually it is going in all four pi directions and for every direction I can calculate a Q out and then I am moving earlier days we used to move the detector the way I am showing you from of course I showed you negative side but generally from zero to positive side I can move the detector I can collect information but now if I have let us say I have shown some angular range if I have two PSDs I can cover this entire range using two PSD at the, at the same time so it is something like parallel processing my signal so not only I am counting neutrons I am also counting counting neutrons at certain positions I will show you the actual counts how they look like and with that given the incident direction and energy I am considering an elastic experiment I can find out the outgoing direction and a direction and then the Q vector and the intensity as a function of Q. So how we do it? So typically this is how a position sensitive detector looks like. This is again a gas detector and you can see there is a wire the central anode wire which is a a resistive anode typically around 10 to 25 micron diameter and this shows a schematic just which I showed that the there are the sample scatters at various angles and the PSD not only counts the neutron also gives me the position which I convert to angles knowing the sample to detector distance. So how do you find out the position is something interesting. There are several ways. 
but I will tell you the way it is done in our group in BIRC. So this is a called a charge division position encoding. So we have the neutron charge cloud. So, so what I mean to say that there is a resistive wire here. There is a central anode wire which is micron diameter. Now the neutron got converted into charged particles and with some uncertainty the shower is arrested here. This, this is position X. If the total length is L, total length is L for the anode wire, typically these are these are around 1 meter long. Our detectors are around 1 meter long. But this length can vary, but typically 1 meter long. When we use a 1 meter long detector, then the, the whatever charges are produced, they move in this direction and travel in this direction. And they give rise to voltage pulse at the end, which is proportional to this length. So if the total length is L, and from left, it, if, if this is x, then it travels a distance of x and L minus x when it goes in two directions. And then the voltage is proportional to x and proportional to L minus x at the two edges. So now you see, now at the both ends, we have pre-amplifiers, then spectroscopic amplifiers, then a circuit which does this job, this algebra. So let us talk about the voltage in this end and voltage in this end. And what is the Z? Z is the input impedance of the preamplifier. So voltage is proportional to resistance per unit length of this wire central wire of the position sensitive detector into L minus X into plus the input impedance of the preamplifier. That's what we get here and the other end we get which is proportional to X. This is VB and this is VA the way we have written it here because this distance is this distance is L minus X and this distance is X at A VA is proportional to rho into L minus X and added to it the input impedance of the preamplifier these two and on the other other side it is VB is proportional to rho X rho is the resistance per unit length so it's a resistive wire into X the distance it travels plus Z the input impedance of the preamplifier. Now you can see that VA plus VB is rho L plus 2Z and if I divide VB upon VA plus VB we get X upon L for input impedance being much much less than this value. So that means the voltage at the two ends are proportional to the distance it traveled and once I can do something called a ratio I take which is VA upon VA plus VB upon VB upon VA plus VB from these things this circuit does the job of finding out the position and then it can send to a multi-challenge analyzer. So ratio output can be obtained from analog or digital ratio circuit. We use a digital ratio circuit here. So rho is the specific resistance of the anode wire per unit length and L is the total length of the resistance. So that is how we figure out where the neutron has struck. So there are some uncertainties because neutron has not struck the anode wire. Neutron has a hit a helium 3 particle helium 3 atom that has produced tritium and proton. This tritium and proton has been collected through a charge multiplication process on the central anode wire. But those lengths in which they are absorbed and the charge cloud is produced are much smaller compared to the total length and the length resolution we get is of the order of 3 to 4 millimeter that happens in within micron lengths. So they are small and zero and we can consider neutron as a point being detected on the central anode wire. Once I get this information, I can start recording in my multi-channel analyzer 
position versus intensity. So this position versus intensity is nothing but it is collection of IQ data at all queues at the same time. So I show you uh, data taken by our detector group head, Dr. Swetha Desai at BIRC. So this is the PSD. What we do actually, we prepare a neutron beam which is very narrow to going through a slit and we either we put the detector across the beam or move the direct neutron beam, generally move the detector across the beam in a shielding box. You can see as the position is changing, you can see the source beam counts are changing position as a function of channel. You can see and almost same everywhere. So if we move by 10 centimeters and check and this is how a position sensitive detector is sort of specific, uh, uh, is calibrated and also tested. So for one minute all these uh, were connected, collected and peak width with plus minus one channel it looks like this. So this position sensitive detector can now go for use in a spectrometer. So this is how uh, the test facility will test the neutron detector for its position sensitivity. So now I show you some specific example. I will discuss the spectrometer later. This is a liquid and amorphous refractometer photograph. I just wanted to show you the photograph along with the schematic to give you an idea of the scale of the thing. This is the, this is the human size, so you can see it's a huge shielding. But inside the shielding box, you can see there is a sample. The neutron beam is coming from a monochromator here, goes to the sample, and then sample can scatter the neutron. There are one, two, three, four, five. So there, is, there are five position sensitive detectors covering a range of angles, which is two degree to 140 degree. And these are helium-3 based detector, so we have got 10 atmospheric pressure of helium-3 and 2 bars of krypton. Uh, krypton is used as a quenching gas that I will not get into right now. But basically helium-3 detects the neutrons in this large, inside the large shielding material. And this is the monochromator drum, the, at the center of which the monochromator is there and then the monochromator brings, sends it to this detector uh, sample position and the sample scatters into the large angle. Because this is a liquid and amorphous spectrometer, I will come to it later when I actually discuss the principle of these spectrometers. And because it is a liquid and amorphous spectrometer, we need to cover a large Q range to get the pair correlation function in this case. Also. Uh, let me show you another example of reducing time by using multiple collection at the same time. This is a small angle scattering instrument. This also I will discuss. It is a multiple PSD base. So earlier days, I come to this. Earlier days, the, there was a sample which was reflecting, we had one detector, one detector. So let me this. So now when there is one detector, this scattering is like a Debye-Scherer cone. So from here, uh, from a sample, a cone goes out, a cone goes out. But this detector just cuts one segment of the cone rest of the cone is not detected. So you do get in, uh, information about angles as you go from the direct beam to larger angles, but you don't cut the entire Debye-Scherer cone because you are use, we were using a single PSD. Now it has been improved to the extent now that you can see uh, here uh, we have used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
sorry excuse me so we have got we have made one two three four five six seven eight eight detectors over here and so we can cut go back to the we can now if it is a device shader cone then i can have detect i have have i have had they can detectors over here now instead of one detector if i have multiple detectors then with respect to the sample position i have got this circle which is showing and there are detectors like this detectors like this so this device shader cone which is there cut for the same angle theta if i consider this angle as theta i have got now number of detectors counting neutrons so i have got a multiplicity of 8 multiplication of 8 in intensity for the same time of counting so i just show you here and this is the data collected this is the central beam and these are the scattered beams that you can measure on these detectors and similarly the psd position and it's shown with respect to the sans data of a uh, uh, ctap micellar system all these things i'll discuss later now i'm just showing you the advantage of using position sensitive detectors detectors that use uh, one after another that means uh, not all the angles at the same time earlier you were using detectors rotating from one position to another now we don't move the detectors the detector collects data over the entire q range <coughs> in this case and uh, the whole data is converted into counts versus channel number and data counts versus q which is important for structural determination so now i will come back to so this i will further add to it that now so far i have been talking about cylindrical detector but there are also in the world nowadays two dimensional detectors so they are actually you have a square <coughs> chamber in which you have vas like this vas going like this like this coming out and this can be the anode vas and the cathode vas the another one can be going like this going like this and that signals are taken out the electrical signals go out from these points so when i have this then the charge produced in this lattice somewhere can be immediately converted into x and y components and then can be converted from the distance from the sample if i consider it kept at a distance from the sample like this from the sample if the charge is detected here immediately i can convert it into q information but now not one not multiple but you are covering almost the entire device shader circle or the diffraction circle using a single detector this is a two dimensional detector and this is also used in major neutron sources like psi and other places we have we are working on it right now and we have made the prototype two dimensional detector in our dhruva also so where you collect the entire q spectrum value in one shot so it's a very big advantage in time with respect to time because neutrons are low intense sources i am harping again and again and that's why we need to improve the data collection efficiency and two dimensional detectors a one step ahead of one dimensional detector where we can collect the entire uh, scattering cone at one go <clears throat> now let me get back to what do i mean by monitor detector this 
most of us who have done x-ray scattering might not have experienced this reason being neutron experiments takes longer hour experiments take longer time hours to even days because neutron intensity is low and we need longer time to count and the reactor is a very big setup so the reactor power may fluctuate so if the power fluctuates then for a particular setting as i showed you that the reactor suddenly something happens that the power might go down after some time they might restore back to the higher power it might again go down due to some problem because reactor operation is a uh, is a technically involved job and they need to keep the reactor operating safely so everywhere these powers it is not a planned fluctuation but it might be stable for some time then it might go down then it might come up so then if i do a serial counting or if serial counting means one setting of detector then another setting after that one other setting how do i do it because the time if i fix let us say 10 seconds i'll count for 10 seconds in my first 10 seconds the reactor power may be high in my next 10 seconds the reactor power may be low so i am not counting for let us say for a peak two positions in the peak for the same time it will cause errors so here instead of time we normalize with respect to a monitor count so what is a monitor counter so i have just showing you a schematic now <coughs> yeah i just show you that it is again from dr sada desai so you can see before the sample there is something called a monitor counter and then of course uh, there can be point detector there can be 1d psd there can also be 2d psd depending on what you have caught with you so but there is a monitor counter now the monitor counter what does it do so a monitor counter is a low efficiency counter it is placed in the incident beam before the beam is incident on your sample so here i show a solar collimator and i put the monitor counter in front of the solar collimator now what i do here i don't count for time but i count for a fixed monitor count and not with respect to time how it helps you can see i have just shown you in a simple diagram if i am counting neutrons for a fixed monitor count suppose the reactor power goes down when the reactor power goes down less number of neutrons are coming from the source from my reactor so it will take longer time so monitor count will the same count let's say i have fixed it for 30000 counts so 30000 counts will take longer time again if the reactor power goes up i have shown you it goes up then the same 30000 counts will take shorter time so the monitor adjusts with respect to the reactor power and at every point i am counting for 30000 monitor count so i have beaten the fact that the reactor power can fluctuate i am doing it for a fixed monitor count so slight fluctuations in reactor power are automatically nullified by monitor count by taking it longer and lesser time and because i am counting for fixed monitor count uh my two points in my data they remain equivalent but this monitor count has to be low efficiency because it is put in the incident beam so we make low efficiency monitor counters and then put it for the ser serial counting system mostly inelastic neutron spectrum we have to put them in the beam path and uh, my counting setup is such that my counting setup works i have to set the number of monitor counts for which each point will be counted and then the counting goes on so this is a photograph uh, my i am thankful to dr sada desai for giving me this photograph these are the various neutron detectors that we have developed uh, at the solid state physics division of brc and there are these are the 1 meter long position sensitive detectors there are monitor counters and we also make x ray counters so 1d psds are there and also curvilinear psds have also been made so this is a photograph of various kinds of detectors that we make similarly there are monitor counters and now let me come to the part of 
scintillation detectors. I haven't discussed it so far because uh, uh, these are mostly used in spallation neutron sources. And here I show you a scintillation process. Some of you may be familiar with it. So there is an incident particle inside a medium. What the medium is? It's basically a, which causes scintillation. That means it absorbs the incident particle, produces photons. So, and these photons, they are through a electron uh, through the window gets inside a photomultiplier. This is basically they multiply photon. They are multiple first converted into electrons and they are multiplied out. These are called dynodes. These electrodes are called dynodes. They are all negative with one. This one is negative with respect to this. This one is negative with respect to this. So, the photon comes and maybe gives you few electrons. This few electrons they move to this dynode. Then this dynode further multiplies it, sends them towards this dynode, and this process goes on, and finally you get an electron shower on my electrode. So, and then we can count the particles. So, here again, the neutron enters, the uh, neutron has to enter the medium and produce photons. So, how does it do? So, neutrons to charge particles to photons. The process is like this. So, I am just copying it from uh, ICS detector group. So, you see, they are discussing about a prototype detector for Polaris instrument. It's a scintillation detector, scintillation that we use a zinc sulfide scintillator. The zinc sulfide is mixed with lithium fluoride. So as I told you earlier that lithium-6, it is enriched with lithium-6. With neutron, it gives me proton and triton. These are charged particles. They are absorbed by zinc sulfide. Zinc sulfide produces photon. So there are very few in the actual so. So here it is lithium. In this nuclei, in alpha layer, alpha particle and triton particles are sorry, uh, this generated. They go through the zinc sulfide lattice causing ionization. So now these charged particles cause ionization, and when the ionization they re, re come back and combine back, they give up a light flash. And so each neutron is converted to light flash and then the light flash is taken into a as I showed you to this through these dynodes and then finally they are counted. So there is a photomultiplier tube which creates so let me just uh, so this is neutrons to charge to ionization in the medium. And when they recombine, recombine the ions in the solid medium, bind, they give rise to photons. These photons travel through the zinc sulfide matrix and enter this photomultiplier tube and they are countered. This is an example of a scintillation detector. I have given the reference if you want. Some of you are interested for more knowledge, you can get it from there. So, this is as opposed to gas detector, this is a scintillation detector and this is used for final detection and not as a monitor. So, I just uh, wanted to show you a photograph. This is a huge detector bank in which this ZNS impregnated with lithium fluoride <coughs> are placed in this polarized refractometer. So how do I find out Q values for this? This is a medium, it's a, it's a diffractometer. So it is done because now this huge detector bank, huge detector bank, they are having the matrix of this, I am just showing it in a simplistic manner, matrix of these, matrix of these detectors and it's a long travel path. So you can say for one particular element here, the angles are fixed. So once they are detected, then this uh, light signal is taken by a photomultiplier out. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, optical fiber they are taken out and converted into 
electron pulse, elect, uh, electron pulses, electronic signals, voltage pulses, and that's how you know the position from the detector. One detector in the matrix, one matrix detectors in the matrix, they provide the information on the Q value. So you collect on a very large Q value that you can see because the <coughs> you can see this is these are the people standing so you can see the scale of things so this is the detector for our polaris diffractometer and this detector bank it, it's in the there's a spallation neutron source and these uh, scintillating glasses glass detectors they collect the final signal and give you the q information so i think i have more or less completed of what I wanted to say regarding the neutron detectors in this talk. We will next go over to the kind of spectroscopies that you can do with neutron and then we will really enter the actual field of neutron diffraction as well as neutron elastic scatter. Thank you.